the Sistine Chapel, Big Ben, the Eiffel Tower. These European monuments define a landscape and are synonymous with the countries they're located. But some buildings defy all expectation in design and form. Get ready, because we're about to visit the ugliest skyscrapers in Europe. Leave your camera in the car. First, let's travel to Munich, Germany, to visit the infamous Hyperhaus. Towering 27 stories tall, this eyesore has been terrorizing the German skyline since 1981. While the owners renovated the building in 2013 to make it more green and energy efficient, the uniquely ugly facade has remained the same over the years. But it all serves a purpose. The box window facade has four layers of glass. One layer allows ventilation by exchanging with outside air by opening the three pane casement windows. Daylight floods in through the coated glass, which optimizes the light while minimizing the heat. The computer controlled system changes the window pane position based on the sun's movements. And the wasted heat trapped in the windows, it's dissipated from the vents back outside. So what lies inside this environmentally friendly monstrosity? The headquarters for Hypo Verains Bank. Germany's fifth largest bank and a second home to thousands of employees. This radical climate skin will pave the way for much better looking skyscrapers, that's for sure. But those pillars and the shape of the building aren't inspiring any other architects anytime soon. Let's stay in Germany and check out the sights of Berlin. While the history of this city has helped define the state of modern politics and German art, this next building won't be remembered with the same reverence. Welcome to the Fernsehturm. Berlin's antenna tower stands at 368 meters tall, blasting radio and television signals all over the country. Completed in 1969, this structure couldn't have been built for functionality over aesthetics. But clearly, that's different from what the designers had in mind. And instead, we got this giant ball with a needle sticking out of it, jetting into the sky for everyone to enjoy. Or not depending on your uh, artistic sensibilities. The Communist Party of East Germany built the tower as a show of strength and a symbol of power. More recently, it was decorated to resemble a soccer ball for the 2006 World Cup. Things changed after the country was reunified and the Iron Curtain fell. Today, the Fernsehturm stands as one of Berlin's most distinct monuments, and it's even used in branding for the city. This building is the fourth tallest freestanding structure in Europe, and if you really felt like it, you could see this antenna in person. A visitor platform offers you a panoramic view of the city from 203 meters high into the sky. From there, you can look at many more excellent sights up to 42 kilometers away. Maybe even have a bite to eat in a restaurant inside, appropriately named The Sphere. This place rotates around once every 30 minutes. So if you don't lose your lunch from the sight of the place, the speed and the height might do it for you. Okay, maybe it's not the prettiest sight in Berlin, but it does attract more than a million people every year. So if you want to look around, get in line and be patient. They only allow up to 320 people inside at a time. I'd make a reservation for the restaurant first. All right, that's enough making fun of Germany's buildings. Let's take a trip over to London next. And while this city holds some of the most iconic sites and buildings on Earth, these next few structures are ones the locals would rather you forget. The Nova Victoria building holds the distinction of winning the 2017 Carbuncle Cup. Well, that sounds nice, right? Well, not exactly. This award is given by Building Design Magazine to the UK's ugliest new building. Ouch. Still, that doesn't stop people from living in the 170 apartments within this facility. Measuring over 132,000 square meters, the structure is actually three buildings connected together in the heart of Westminster. The most prominent building is 21 stories tall, the second largest comes in at 15 stories. Each building was built separately, allowing the contractors to take full advantage of the six tower cranes it took to create this monster. And even though you may wish otherwise, this megastructure was built to last. The galvanized steel used for the support beams and columns are made to withstand even the harshest elements. It holds offices, retail stores, community spaces, and a library. Despite what you might think of the design, life here isn't cheap. An apartment could cost over $800,000, and that's if you're lucky enough to find anything at all. If that price made your heart jump, then you should consider getting insurance. Luckily, a visit to our next London building could provide you with peace of mind. Welcome to one of London's most famous architectural blights, the Lloyds Building. Locals call this structure the Inside Out Building, since all the elevators and ducts are located outside. Why would anyone do that? Well, with those elevators outside, the entire floor plan is maximized for the workers within. 
but that design has come with some huge drawbacks. Weathering from exposure has caused severe damage to the vital service pipes, driving maintenance and repair costs up astronomically. In fact, the damage has been so extensive that Lloyd's almost left the building in 2014. That's the price you pay for being the first of your kind. The structure is comprised of three primary and three service towers that surround a central rectangular space. While the building was completed in the 80s, the company's history goes back hundreds of years. On the first floor, you can find the Lost Book for Lloyds dating back to the beginning of the insurance giant. The old tome can be viewed by the public and has entries written with a quill pen. The underwriting room, where all the action takes place, is lit from overhead by a barrel-vaulted glass roof, supported from underneath by a 60-meter-high atrium. Escalators can access the first four floors, but for anything higher, you'll have to brave the ride in the outside elevators. Yeah, good luck with that. You can find this famous building in the center of London's main financial district, and it even managed to nab a Grade 1 listing in 2011. That honor gives this building recognition as one of the most historic structures of the modern epoch. Hey, that's their words, not mine. But yeah, an insurance building is not the most exciting structure to hang out in, even if it is dangerous and ugly. So let's take a trip through the channel across the French-Spain border and visit the historic city of Madrid. And while you could take in old-world customs, tapas, and exquisite architecture from the past, our tour will take you to the Mirador. This housing project might send you looking for a new trailer instead of an apartment. This building measures over 63 meters tall, has 21 stories, and takes up 23,000 square meters. The housing project was meant to break up the mundane urban setting with something outrageous and non-conforming. Well, they hit that mark, that's for sure. The architects designed the pathways inside like small vertical streets, all leading to small neighborhoods, each different than the last. And that's right down to the materials, textures, colors, and facades. The frame-like structure stands alone in the city. You won't confuse this building with anything else. Depending on the time of year you visit, you might be able to book an apartment for around $200 a night. But before you unpack your bags, let's visit the final buildings in the tour in Milan, Italy. Now, many people call this area Ugly City, and whether or not you agree, this building does not help their reputation. The Milano Convention Center is one of the largest venues of its kind in Europe. It's too bad the building doesn't look more welcoming. The cover atop the structure was meant to blend the complex into the urban cityscape. The intricate rooftop is called Cometa and stretches over 1,500 square meters. Unfortunately, as one article put it, it looks like a napkin hanging over the building. The architect meant for the Cometa to be the defining feature, and she did not fail. Step inside the metal and glass structure, and you'll be greeted with a 180-degree view of the city. It even reflects the sun and clouds making sunrise and sunset look spectacular. 8,000 reflective aluminium flakes were fitted together to create this shape and form the light into this specially crafted effect. And at night, specially calibrated lights make the roof look like a glowing cloak. The center can hold up to 18,000 people in 65 conference rooms, two plenary halls, and an auditorium. There are even 54,000 square meters of exhibition space, making this center perfect for any occasion. The Cometa of the Milano Convention Center pushes boundaries, but it may not be the worst building in Milan. For that honor, you'll have to visit the Torre Velasca. Completed in 1958, this odd-shaped building was one of the first of a new wave of modern architecture in Italy. Yeah, being the first doesn't always mean you're going to be the best, but that shape definitely stands out. The mushroom-like building stands over 100 meters tall, with 26 stories inside. Think of that phallic structure as a throwback to the Italian castles of days past. All the people who live and work here probably feel safe, knowing that not many others want to come inside. The architects kept the base smaller to take advantage of the narrow Milan streets below, giving more ample space to the higher floors. The stone material and supporting struts also helped the building blend in with the Gothic architecture in the city. Well, blend is a strong word, and if you think this building is due for demolition, I have bad news for you. It's not going anywhere. In 2011, the government put the Torre Velasca under protection as a historic building. Not every building can be a work of art, but it takes particular skill to design something that defies all artistic sensibilities. What are your favorite ugly megastructures in Europe? Let us know in the comments, and keep watching for the best and the worst megastructures on Earth right here 